cables 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 can't live with them can't live without them ah, you know what but we don't have to always have cables in our lives in this video i'm looking at the fio utws5 true wireless bluetooth amplifier let's get it What's cracking audio fans? It's David here from Prime Audio Reviews. Here's the box for the UTWS5. And as we've seen recently from Fio, it's got a rather shiny finish on it. It's got this sort of high quality cardboard with a kind of a plasticky finish on it. It's really nice, but it's a box after all. Let's have a look at the actual product. And there she is. Well, that's part of it. That is the box. That's the charging case. And the case, uh, you can see it's uh, it's pocketable. It's it's bigger than a TWS case. I mean, TWS earphones case in general, obviously. But the case itself weighs 122 grams, and that is including the adapters. These adapters here. So there they are. Theo UTWS five and essentially what these do is they turn your wired itms into wireless ones it's a pretty simple concept it's been around for a while actually but we've we've seen a few before this is uh this is the fio i've had a few before this i think they started at one and then they had a utws3 oh, i don't know i don't know i can't remember all the models there's too many to mention but we're up to five now, or the 5S to be precise. Let me show you how they work. And then I'll tell you uh, uh, some of the specs. Of course, you got um, Bluetooth 5.2 with Qualcomm's latest. Let me see what it is here. It is the QCC5141 Qualcomm Bluetooth chip. And each earpiece or ear hook has got its own uh, independent DAC chip and that DAC chip is an AK4332. The price for this unit is about $129 and there you go. As you can see, I've hooked it up and it's ready to go. Now from this point on, you basically just pair them up like you would with any Bluetooth earphone. The only difference being that now, you're using high quality IEM. So this one here is the FIO FH5S with its dragon scale faceplate, beautiful IEM. Now on the ear hooks, you've got a single button on each side and they perform like your TWS controls. Basically you can play and pause, fast forward and rewind your music. These also have uh, volume controls, a single click in my current configuration will set up the uh well i mean we'll increase the volume on the right and decrease on the left but if you fire up you, the fio control app on your mobile phone there's actually three different button configurations and you can choose from those to suit your preferences along with a couple of other things like you can change the digital filter several several things pr pretty cool features in there i'll throw up a screenshot on the on the video here now in terms of output power, you're looking at about 33 milliwatts at 32 ohms. Now that may not sound like a lot, but it's actually significantly more than the iBasso CF01 here, which we'll talk about in a minute. First of all, let's, let's talk about how the UTWS5 sounds. That name's a bit of a mouthful, but... Oh, and by the way, in terms of battery life, you're looking at about six to seven hours from the ear hooks and then you get an additional four charges from the case. So not too bad in terms of battery life. One other thing that I will mention before we get onto the sound is that the you are able to make phone calls with the UTWS5 here, but the onboard microphones sound pretty bloody awful. I wouldn't wanna use them unless absolutely necessary for phone calls. I didn't make a recording of the mics, they just sound pretty terrible, frankly. 
Right, now let's get on to how these sound. And for my testing, I used my iPhone, which of course uses the AAC wireless audio codec, but I also used my Windows PC and my Fio M6 here, so I could test out the APTX. When it comes to sound signature, the UTWS5 has a vibrant, clear and confident sound. There's a hint of added warmth in the bass and lower mid-range combined with an open extended treble. The bass is delightfully controlled regardless of the extra body, sounding earthy and natural, but tight. Despite its beefy output power, I don't hear any background noise or buzzing even when I'm using sensitive IEMs. And this gives the device excellent resolution and it aids with the instrument separation and the sound stage as well. I find that although the treble is spacious and has good extension on this device, it is a tad less forward than it is on some of my other sources. Now that actually works in the favor of some IEMs, case in point the Fio FH5S here, which um, can sound a little bit edgy and bright in the treble, but I find that it has a, these have an excellent synergy with the UTW5 UTWS5 rather. I hope I haven't been mixing that up the whole time. But yeah, great synergy between these two and I've been thoroughly enjoying my FH5S which have been in the box to be honest um, most of the time since I reviewed them initially. But this pairing sounds really fantastic. It's very open, very detailed, it's uh, natural, it's got good timbre, it's got excellent detail retrieval. Nice, tight, but thumpy, punchy bass, and just a really good combo. So even when you're using high-end IEMs, and I mean like higher than this, you know, up around the $1,000 and up mark, even with those, you still get a good sound. Like, obviously, you're not going to get the same quality that you do from a desktop amplifier or a premium wired source. But the difference is almost negligible, especially when you're using APTX. Although obviously if you're doing critical listening, then you probably pick out more differences. But for just general everyday listening, you hardly, you, you probably won't even notice that you're listening over Bluetooth with APTX, as I said, because the sound is just mint. Right, so I think I've covered most things there. Let's have a quick comparison between the cases here now. Now they're roughly the same size on the exterior, but the main difference is inside here. The iBasso here, oh look, there's my FH3. The iBasso here has got quite a bit more space inside. Not only that, but it's got these silicone sort of pillows on the top and bottom as well. So if you've got really precious or fragile IEMs, that you might feel a little bit safer with these. Having said that, most uh, IEMs fit very snugly in the FH and the UTWS5 case, but I found that with some of my custom IEMs, I can fit pretty much anything in the Ibasso case, but I can't fit anything much bigger than the FH5S in this case. Even, even this IEM is, it just, it only just fits. It's not tight, like I don't have to cram it shut or anything, but you wouldn't really fit anything larger than that in this case. But in terms of sound, I think uh, audio purists may prefer the neutrality of the iBasso here because it's got a very linear, transparent sound, whereas the UTWS5 has got a slightly warmer low end. It's got a little bit more warmth and body to the sound. As a result of the iBasso's more transparent sound, it's got a slightly tighter bass, a starker treble, a bigger sound stage. So which one will suit you better might depend on the IEMs. For example, the FH5S here, I find the synergy and pairing much better with the UTW5 WS5 than I do with the CF01. I just find it a little bit too bright, a little bit sharp with the iBasso. However, something like the FH3, which is a bit warmer and doesn't have as forward a treble, does sound really nice on the iBasso, but it also sounds equally as good on the Fio here. 
But the UTWS5 does have a couple of other advantages over the iBasso. Primarily, it has more driving power. The output power on this is about 33 milliwatts versus the iBasso, which is like 9 milliwatts at 32 ohms. So if you've got harder to drive IEMs or headphones, you get more output power from the FIO. And another advantage from the FIO is you get a slightly better battery life. So guys, that is the FIO UTWS5. And uh, I think this is a wonderful device. It's actually, it's probably the, my favorite out of the ear hooks like this that I've tested so far. I just think it has a, I just like it slightly fuller tonality a bit more. I also like these large buttons on the side that are easy to press. I like having volume controls on there as well. That's pretty important for me. But I'm going to wrap it up there. So thanks for watching. If you liked this video, give it a like, Parfam audio file style. And if you want to see more reviews like this in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And until next time, see you later.